Can you remember that one thing you always wanted to try but which you never found the time for? Maybe you wrote it down on your bucket list or thought about it during your New Year's resolutions. No matter if it's reading that new book, learning a new language, starting that business idea, painting that picture, getting into shape or playing the guitar. I don't know how to play the guitar. Is this even a guitar? The point is these things have been going through your head for quite a bit, but you never found the time to give them a shot. But well, I'm telling you, now is the time. Seriously, now is the time. We are occupying every minute of our time with the things we always do. Over the course of years, we developed an obsession about productivity-driven routines. Our lives have become so busy that we barely find the time to try out new things. And when there happens to be a moment in which our minds aren't occupied with anything and are finally free, we quickly grab our phone and pretend to do something important. Like scrolling through social media, looking at memes, playing games, or watching YouTube videos. I guess it's okay to watch my videos, right? I mean seriously, like, when was the last time you were actually bored? At least I can't really remember for myself because I'm always on my phone, on my laptop, just distracting myself. The internet gives us instant access to anything at any time. And I believe it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. On the one side we have the opportunity to learn anything we want for almost no money. But on the other hand, we easily get lost and distracted by the gigantic amount of entertainment content which keeps us from spending time with ourselves. To be honest, computers and phones and any sorts of electronic devices, they already took over our lives, even if we don't want to admit it. It's really hard to measure the average time that we spend on our electronic devices, but from what I found on the internet, we spend an average of 3 hours and 15 minutes on our phones and 11 hours on any sorts of electronic devices, which is including television, laptop, phone, anything you can imagine which is electronic and entertains you. I can actually check what my screen time was last week. Probably it's really, really high. And we have three hours and 11 minutes on average. I'm still below average, <laughs> but last week, for example, it was three and a half hours on average, which is just so much time you spend on your phone. But the even scarier thing is that these amounts are just the averages per day. If we would add it up, it would be 77 hours per week, 4,000 hours per year, or 320,000 hours in a lifetime of an average of 80 years. So in other words, we spend 13,500 days or 35.5 years on our screens. With an average sleeping time of 8 hours, this is 70% of our time in the digital world. I mean, that's just crazy, right? Obviously, most of us are forced to work on screens for our jobs because it's just much more efficiently than just like writing everything down. As a filmmaker and editor, I'm working most of the time in front of screens. I'm writing my scripts on my phone or on my laptop. I'm editing photos and videos on my laptop. So it's just an enormous amount I'm already spending on screens just for my work. But the thing is that even in our free time, we can't really let go of all these electronic devices. Okay, so let's just break down what the average weekday of us looks like. We sleep for nine hours, get ourselves ready and have breakfast for one hour, go to work and have lunch for nine hours, do household tasks like buying food or cleaning the house for one hour, have dinner for one hour and try to fall asleep for one hour. That's already 22 hours. So we end up with around two hours of free time, but I guess you already know where we spent those last two hours. Obviously this graphic would look different for all of us. Maybe there's less work, more studying, maybe time for sport or time for childcare. It always just depends on your point of life and your habits. But what I'm trying to say is that this amount of time that we have each day, 24 hours, is just so easily filled up with our productivity-driven routines that we often forget to take time for the new things. The phrase, I don't have time for that, became one of the most common and most accepted excuses nowadays. To be honest, it's just about prioritizing your time. There's enough time for all of us. We all have 24 hours each day, but we just need to define what's most important to us. Us. And I think that most people forget what's important to them because they are just so caught up in their everyday lives. And that's the reason why it's so so hard to approach new things and to try them out because in our heads we're always just 
thinking about the next best thing to do. We always distract ourselves and we never really take that space to really try out something new. So the graphic I showed you was our reality for a long time, but in the last weeks, a lot of things changed. officially designating coronavirus as a global pandemic. It's that there's been a total lack of supply which seems to persist. More than 3 billion people in almost 70 countries have been asked to stay at home. Yeah, the coronavirus is all over the news, it's all over the countries, it's everywhere in the world. So I think the virus really changed the way of our lives for everybody, including myself. It was actually a really, really bad timing for me because I just quit my job. Yeah, my plan was to go traveling again. I wanted to live abroad and work there as a freelancer and photographer. But yeah, I quickly recognized that this is not going to happen in the next few months. So after leaving Kempton, which is the town I used to live in, I moved to my hometown in the south of Munich. And there I lived together with my mom and my brother. <laughs> In the beginning at home, things didn't really go to plan as expected. I slept in until noon and it already got bright outside. I spent a lot of time with my cats and watched YouTube and Netflix for hours. So I tried to distract myself in any way possible. But after a couple of days, I realized that these limitations are not going to be over in a few weeks. Maybe it'll take a few months, maybe even years for things to go back to normal. So I knew some things needed to change. So when I'm feeling stuck and I can't really get my ass up to do anything, I always have the same mindset. Focus on the things you can control, not the things which are out of your hands. Why should you occupy your mind with things that are out of your control? You can't even change them, so why should you waste your time with it? I see it this way, if there's one good thing, okay, these are two, if there's one good thing about the quarantine, it's that we just have a lot of time. We're not allowed to meet our friends, we're trapped at home, we have to work less. So yeah, it's just a lot of time we have. And it's really easy to get into the wrong mindset and to just think, most people aren't doing anything right now, so I don't have to feel bad if I do nothing. In some weird way, we are forced into our comfort zone and we don't even feel bad about it. Because of that mindset, it's very easy to get demotivated and passively wait until this whole thing is over. But having that much free time is actually a very rare situation. So why not use it to grow as a person and explore new opportunities instead of waiting for our lives to go back to normal? Why stay passive if you could actually be active? So after realizing that, finally some things started to change. I spent more quality time with my family. <laughs> We played games, cooked together, and I started to run with my brother every second day for at least 10 kilometers. I felt like running was a real game changer for myself, because as soon as I just got up and did some sports, I was already motivated to do more things. As all the gyms closed, I started to work out in our garden. I finally found time to work on several video scripts, which I've been pushing further back week by week. And I started a new online course about digital products, which is actually really interesting. All of those are things that I really wanted to do, but somehow they always ended up at the bottom of my to-do list. I guess I even had more free time than most other people because I also quit my job at that time. But talking to my friends, it turned out that everybody is kind of like in the same situation where they have a lot more time than usual. So why am I telling you all of this? By making this video, I want to motivate each and every one of you guys out there to just make the best out of the current situation. For most of us, these limitations give us some headspace and finally the opportunity to take more time for ourselves and the people around us. I challenge you to spend time with the people you love and to actively try new things which never got ticked off your bucket list. Maybe for some of us, it's even like a wake up call to finally have time to reevaluate what's important to you and to make some changes. To be honest, this point of time is perfect to develop new habits because everything is just so predictable. So yeah, you have time to just do things repeatedly and to build up those habits. You go running for one day, two days, three days, a week and so on. And eventually you will build up a good habit of doing something that you wanted to implement in your life. Probably some of you guys out there completely disagree with what I'm saying because you just want to chill. You just want to take some time, just like take a breath. 
that's completely fine. Like I'm not telling you that you should get back to productivity and work hard and hustle. I'm just telling you that it's like a really rare situation to have that much time. So I think we should use it. And hopefully this can be a small reminder and like a kick in the ass for you guys to get up and to do something again. Uh, I want you guys to stay active instead of just like lying down there and just waiting until it's over because it's still going to take a lot of time probably. So in the next months, I'm also challenging myself to get into some new things. And one of the biggest projects is going to be this YouTube channel with you guys. It's actually been a dream of mine for such a long time to have this own YouTube channel and to just create videos, which I'm really excited about and to tell inspiring stories. I want to get more into script writing and storytelling and also lighting. This is just like a really, really cheap light that I bought like three years ago, but it's doing all right. But also besides filmmaker, I want to try some new things like learning Spanish. I've I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but I never really got into it and I always pushed it further back. And also maybe playing the guitar. I don't know why, but I think it's a cool instrument. Maybe I'm gonna try it, maybe not. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely had a lot of fun creating it. Let me know in the comments one thing that you really want to try out during the quarantine and with all the time you have. And also let me know some feedback on the video, what you liked, what you didn't like, maybe some new video ideas if you have anything on your mind. If you really enjoyed the video, then it would be awesome if you guys share it with any of your friends who might also be demotivated at the moment. Maybe they also need a kick in the ass right now. Sharing this video always helps a lot to grow this YouTube channel. Yeah, subscribe if you didn't already. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace out, goodbye.